Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on uh, importing custom locations. Uh, in the setup getting started tutorials that you probably saw during the trial period, we showed you how you could add custom points and custom locations to your map. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how you can import uh, large quantities of points uh, if you know the latitude and longitude coordinates uh, using some of the built-in mechanisms in Weather Defender. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is do a quick refresh on using the custom points tool uh, to add some a few custom locations. I'm going to start with a blank map, so I'll just click the shield menu and new map. And we'll have uh, pulled up here map of the United States, and if you have a home position entered it should show up on your map here. The first thing we're going to do is just uh, do a quick refresher here using the custom locations tool where we can just add a point to your map. Now the value of this is being able to monitor the weather around friends or family in different parts of the country uh, or maybe you have facilities that you want to keep tabs on. Uh, whatever the purpose is, this is how you can just quickly and easily add a few custom points to your map. So um, the most basic usage of this tool is to click once on the tool and then uh, click again on the map and you'll get a pop-up here where you can label that point. So I'm just going to put a few family members on the map. So let's say um, uh, my uh, parents live near Minneapolis so I'm just going to put them on the map here. And you will see that their position shows up here. Now the second way that you can add a single point to your map is to add it at an address. If you know the address uh, you could either enter the street address, the city and state, or just the zip code. Uh, then it will automatically place a point at that location. So uh, my brother-in-law lives out in Seattle. So I don't even have to enter the address. I can enter the address, but if I just want an approximation, I can also just enter the city and state. Click OK. And here it moves the map automatically to that city, and we're going to enter uh, Matt and his wife. So you can see it puts them right down on top of Seattle. Uh, and then the third uh, way to use this tool is to add a, a point at a coordinate. And now this is using the decimal degree system, latitude and longitude. 39.74, and this is just roughly where Denver is, 104.98. Anyway, so I'm going to add that to my map, and here it pops up, moves right over to Colorado, and we're going to add that location there. Great, so there they are. So now this this works well if you have a couple of points you just need to quickly put something on your map. Uh, this is a perfect tool for using that. But what I wanted to show you with this tutorial is how you can import a whole set of points if you already have a list, for example. Like maybe you have 20 or 30 points. This would be a rather tedious way to do that. Well, fortunately in Weather Defender, it's very easy to import data because this is using a, a very robust industry strength GIS engine. And this is what I'm going to show you how to do next. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can build a list outside of Weather Defender of points um, using latitude and longitude information and build that list and import that directly into Weather Defender. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start, I'm going to open Microsoft Excel here. And here's how this works. You enter the first two columns of your list will be latitude and longitude, and you need to use the abbreviations LAT for latitude, LON for longitude. Every column after that is information that can be pulled up inside a Weather Defender, um, so you can add as many columns as you want. For example, the name. This would be like the label you're going to associate with the point. Um, you can add, you know, elevation or whatever information you want to add. Um, in your data set, you can pull this stuff in and view it later in Weather Defender. But for right now, let's just keep things simple. I'm just going to do latitude, longitude, and name. And I'm going to start out by entering some information here, you know, like it needs to be in decimal degree format, so your your latitude is your north-south, and your longitude is your east-west. So I'm going to, I have a list here of uh, points. I'm going to pull this in and populate it right after this break. And uh, done here populating the list. All I have here is a simple list of mountain peaks in the United States and they're ordered by uh, the height in feet with the highest being up in Alaska, Mount McKinley, um, all the way down to Harney Peak which is in uh, South Dakota I believe uh, at 7,000 feet. But this is just a good demonstration of how I have uh, 
a dozen, actually 15 points here, and I'm going to bring these into Weather Defender very easily. So here I'm going to save this. Now I'm using this Microsoft Excel, but you have to save it in a specific format. So I'm going to do Save As, and in the drop-down list here, I'm going to select comma delimited, or this is CSV, also stands for comma separated values, but it needs to be in this format, CSV, and then just name it anything, um, I'll put it on the desktop here, mountain and uh, if you're using Excel it's going to complain about the formats just click OK yes and uh, so I'll get out of that I'm gonna move this over just to show you here is my Excel spreadsheet sitting right here on the on the desktop now you could save it to a folder and you could open it from a folder but I just wanted to show you how easy this is all you need to do is simply drag and drop and here we go on our map you'll see a new layer appeared in the map layers window over here on our map there's all these red dots and these are the peak mountains for what we just entered one other thing I wanted to show you really quickly is that if you do not have Excel or any specific spreadsheet editor this is a really a basic file if you want to import a list all you need to do is get it into a, a comma separated values a CSV format which simply means you have the titles of the columns up at the top followed by in each line each row having a successive um, the information separated by commas so lat lon as we mentioned uh, we have a name column and a peak column and then below that for each mountain peak we entered we have the latitude the longitude the name of the mountain and I have the um, height in feet and we'll make this uh, file available for your reference but it's very easy anyone really can sit down and create their own lists or import lists from other programs if you have them okay so now we have a couple of red dots on our map and um, they're in the right locations but they're not of much use to us unless we happen to have memorized you know all of the uh, specific locations for these mountains so what we want to do is show the labels we included that in our data file so we want to show them so here's how you do that click on the mountains and properties we're gonna open up the main property sheet for this layer and then what we're gonna do is click customize map display this opens a very special and pretty powerful property sheet that has uh, control over how this layer is rendered on this map um, just I won't be going over all of the details because this is a very uh, deep uh, editor in here and we'll we'll be covering this in more depth in other tutorials but all you need to know for now is that it controls the shapes the colors um, the labels a lot of what you see on the map and weather defender is controlled using this detailed um, layer uh, GIS editor. I'll show you for example we could just take these uh, change the mountain ranges to a, a light blue, a cyan, click apply and you'll see over here on the map these have all just updated. We can increase the size here of these shapes make them look bigger and you can see that. And then finally um, what I want to do is add a label. Now if you remember from our Excel spreadsheet, we had a couple extra columns in addition to the latitude and longitude, the coordinates. We also listed the name of the peak and the height of the peak. And if you go to this label tab here, this is where you'll be able to select which field you want to use as a label. And so we'll just select name and click apply and boom, there it is. So here's the names of all of our peaks. So this is basically how labeling works. And you can again, you can control things like the color uh, using this tool here. And there's one other thing if you wanted to switch over to let's say the peak, uh, the height of the peak, you could do something like this. So this is displaying the height in feet of each of these mountain peaks. And yes you can combine labels and do a lot more here but I'm not going to go into it, that's uh, beyond the scope of this tutorial. But this is basically what I wanted to show you. I hope you found this interesting and useful and I uh, hope you can put it to work for you and your organization. Thanks for watching.